thank you. Um, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I would like to start by thanking, uh, thanking uh, Dr. Chapman for the kind invitations uh, to uh, participate in this uh, meeting, which uh, I have a chance to see uh, some of my very good friends of the American HPBA community. And also, I've enjoyed the sessions uh, today so far. So I hope that you also enjoy these sessions on debate. And um, I'm going to take uh, the stand of um, saying that surgical resection ablation should be the preferred initial approach for early HAC in patients with preservative functions, including patients with child's A cirrhosis. So, uh, of course, the management of HCC is challenging in that we are facing a patient with two diseases, and that is actually the reason why we have so much debate about this, the management of this disease. On one hand, we have an um, early malignant tumor which often grow quickly and prone to vascular invasion. And the other important problem is associated underlying cirrhosis in 80% of cases, which uh, have two implications. First, it impairs the lip function and sometimes limit the treatment options, despite the tumor being very early stage. And the other problem is, is a tendency to multicentric hepatocarcinogenesis. So currently, there are three uh, curative treatments for early XCC, uh, being liver resection, local ability therapies, in particular radio frequency ablation, and liver transplantation. And which is the best initial treatment option for an early HCC in child's acerosis has been a debate for uh, many years. And I don't think it's going to be resolved uh, in the near future because I, don't, uh, I wouldn't foresee any randomized controlled trials uh, regarding uh, these kind of op treatment options, which is particularly difficult with transplantation as one of the options. But I think more and more data are being um, presented in the literature, which suggests that uh, probably liver resection or ablation should be the preferred initial treatment. I will focus more on liver resection because there are obviously more data on liver resection, but I will also spend a few slides in the end about the role of ablation. So the current result of liver resections in cirrhotic liver uh, has been as much uh, improved compared with the past. And I think in uh, major centers, the mortality for major resection should be less than 5% and for minor resections should be less than 1%. The hospital stay, morbidity is also decreasing, and the need for blood product is also decreasing. And indications for liver resection now can be extended to patients with mild to moderate comorbid illnesses, and also for patients with borderline liver function. So this chart shows the trend of blood transfusion requirement for liver resections in our institutions. It used to be more than 80% uh, in the early 1990s, but in the recent years, the blood transfusion rate for liver resection is less than 5% in our institution, and I'm sure this is the same in a lot of institutions with high volume of liver resection. In uh, 2003, we published a series of 84 patients with major hepatic resection, that means right or left or extended hepatectomy, for XCC less than 5 cm associated with child's A cirrhosis. And this is um, one example that uh, um, has been operated, as you can see from the date of the CT scan, it was 1997. And this patient had a three centimeter tumors situated centrally, closely related to the right portal and hence the right hepatectomy was necessary. And this patient is still, having, uh, still uh, being followed in our clinic, and he has been disease free for more than uh, 12 years now. And of course, this is, you may think that this is an odd case, but uh, actually, when we look at our database, we do have quite a number of patients who have been disease-free for more than 10 years after resection. And this probably will speak for um, my stand that resection should remain the first choice. So in these studies, we find that the five-year survival was 73%, and five-year disease-free survival was 50%. So this is probably one of the best survival results that has been reported for resection of XCC. In recent years, there has been advances in laparoscopic uh, surgical techniques so that liver resection can now be performed by laparoscopic means. And these are a couple of examples, uh, small tumors that can be performed uh, by either cementectomy or wet resection. And this obviously has an important advantage in that the patient's uh, morbidity and also the hospital stay can be significantly reduced. Actually, both of these patients were discharged one day after the surgery. And this was not impossible, uh, this was not possible with uh, open surgery in the past. And also there's evidence that now that the proscopic liver resections uh, probably converts similar oncological clearance compared with open surgical resection. And although there's no randomized trial yet, a meta-analysis of eight non-randomized comparative studies shows that 
there was no difference in oncological clearance, and there was reduced blood loss, reduced hospital stay, and probably reduced morbidity. So this will add the benefit of liver resection uh, compared with open surgery, and enhance the value of liver resection for XCC. Now, what role of liver transplantation? It's well established that liver transplantation offers the best of cure for patients who have small XCC associated with child cirrhosis, because these patients are not amenable to other curative options like resection or even ablations. And the four-year survival, as reported by Mr. Farrell's uh, landmark paper, is 75%. So now the debate comes to the survival figures. When you look at the five-year overall survival, and in the literature, the resection group of our child's A cirrhosis with small XCC less than 5 cm, the five-year survival was 70%. Transplantation is probably 70 to 80%, so it was similar. But the main argument in favor of transplantation is the much higher five-year disease-free survival. So for resection, the five-year disease-free survival in the literature was 40 to 50%, but for transplantation, his five-year disease-free survival was 60 to 70%. However, I would like to emphasize that when we compare the survival result, overall survival is still the primary and the main outcome in any cancer treatment. And the difference in the disease-free survival do not lead to difference in overall survival because after transplantation, patients do die from other complications. For liver resection, they die mainly from recurrent tumors, some from liver failure. But for transplantation, they die from graft rejection, complicated immunosuppression such as opportunistic infections, second malignancies, and recurrence of viral hepatitis and cirrhosis. And I must say that all these complications are equally important as tumor recurrence, and we should not consider tumor recurrence as the main uh, outcomes that we assess when we compare the two. So because of the different nature of the treatments and associated long-term problems, Overall survival rather than tumor recurrence-free survival should be considered a primary outcome in the comparison. So let's look at the uh, data in the literature. There are some retrospective comparative studies that directly compare liver resection with liver transplantation. And this is one study from a Barcelona group. In these studies, the authors compare 36 patients with liver resection and 37 patients with transplantation for solitary XCC less than five centimeter in child A cirrhosis. The post-operative mortality was lower in the resection group, 0% versus 5.6% in the transplantation group. There were 70 long-term deaths after resection, and as you can see, most of these uh, deaths resulted from tumor recurrence. There were 11 long-term deaths after transplantation, only four from tumor recurrence, three from sepsis related to immunosuppression, and four from XCV recurrence. And if you take into account all these deaths, then the median survival was 85 months in both drugs, exactly the same. And when you even look at the 10-year survival, this study shows that the overall survival at 10 years was similar between the two groups. In addition to such comparison, one should also look at the intent to treat effect, because we know that for resection, we can perform the treatments immediately, whereas for transplantation, most of patients need to wait for the cadaveric graft and some patients will drop out because of tumor progression and die before they receive the transplantation. So this is again a very important paper from the Spanish, from the Spanish group, Barcelona group. They compared the survival of 77 patients with XCC less than 5 cm resection as primary option versus 87 patients listed for transplantation, and there were eight dropouts on waiting list in the transplant group. And this study shows that the survival was similar between resection and transplantation. And actually, if you look at the candidates 